Thank you, Francesco, for the kind invitation. After Eric speaking us about ICL sizing made easy, let's speak about what ICL sizing made difficult. So, as we all know, the holy grail in uh, ICL surgery is to achieve uh, the right uh, vaulting. And as Eric explained us, it's quite difficult because actually we don't see behind the iris because the sulcus actually is kind of the dark side of the moon. So it's impossible to be seen with any OCT or slit lamp. The only way we have to see behind the iris is via the ultrasound by microscopy, the UVM. And this is a scan from the art scan, uh, which is the device tied by the Rheinstein. So here we have a beautiful image, but let's talk later about what's happening behind the iris. So if we do a review of the literature, so this is coming from our study, we see that the precision of the OCOS website, which is the manufacturer nomogram, the precision is about 70% in what? In achieving a vaulting which is within 250 microns. And this is in agreement with the literature. This is a similar study done by Camilla and they found the very same result. So the nomogram coming from the star company has a good precision, which is 60 something percent, but as we all know, it's only related on a few parameters, such as the aqueous depth, the case, the K1, K2, the refractive error, and the white to white, which is a proxy, the white to white for the sulcus to sulcus or the diameter of the city of the body because they are a publicly traded company on the Nasdaq and of course they want to have the sales high so they try to make it easy and they are lucky because they have a beautiful product which is very much forgiving so many sizing probably fit one eye this is the review from Bucker and we see that there is quite a large scattering of vaulting according to the different formulas out there. However, since the ICL itself is forgiving, so far so good, more or less. But why a correct prediction is so difficult? Because we only have four sizes maybe yes maybe no because i believe that four sizes are good because many parameters comes into play actually and many formulas the vast majority of the formulas use linear regression analysis and also i will show you why there is a significant noise about the postoperative lens position so i asked a friend my best friend which is actually a colleague of mine, why the prediction is so difficult. And he told me, his name is ChatGPT version 4, he told me that these are the most important parameters for ICL sizing. Anterior chamber depth, white to white diameter, lens thickness, sulcus to sulcus diameter, endothelial cells, actually this is not related to sizing, but it's important. Okay, thank you, Chad GPT. One, we don't have uh, what Eric said, uh, the lens rise uh, and other parameters, because this stuff is last updated in 2021. So we expect to have updates uh, with our papers. What is the noise behind the iris? So this is a lens, an NCL, which is positioned in the sulcus, as you can see. Here is in the sulcus. Here is in the sulcus and here is the resting on the sidereal body. Here is in the sulcus and here is resting in the sidereal body. And, sorry, and here the lens is resting on the sidereal body. So as you can see, the sulcus is clear. And here we have the vast majority of cases, about 90% of cases, they fall here. 
So this is what I mean with the noise. We actually don't really know where we put the lens because uh, many other things uh, beyond the matrix of the eye comes into play. So we developed uh, an algorithm. We, we studied the extra tree regression, which is uh, an algorithm for uh, machine learning. And uh, we compared to the other algorithms and we found the extra tree to be the most precise compared to the random forest and the extreme gradient boosting. So this extra tree was the one performing the best. And what is, what is the advantage of the extra tree? So with regular linear regression, we ask the computer to draw a line best fitting our data. With polynomial regression, we ask the computer to draw a curve best fitting the data. With the decision tree, we ask the computer to randomly create trees splitting the data according to, let's say, random cutoff points. And the computer does thousands of these trees and then averages them all in a multi-dimensional manner so that the computer can take into consideration many parameters simultaneously. And we got this paper published in the JCRS a few months ago. And this is on a number of 449 eyes. And the study was done in our practice and in Giacomo Savini's practice. And the precision of the manufacturer nomogram is what in our study was reported to be 72% in achieving a voting within 250 microns. With our model, the precision went up to 88% of accuracy, so a significant improvement was found. These are the voting we could measure after the surgery and in red, you can see how accurate is the precision of the model in predicting the final voting before the surgery. And this is the relationship between attempted and achieved. The R square value is 0.5. But let's go back to the MS39. So what are the parameters, the most important parameters that we take into consideration. These are those parameters. And here we can see the marginal contribution of each parameter to the importance for the voting. Of course, the most obvious one is the ICL size. This is quite obvious. Then we have, as Eric said, length rise that was not reported by ChatGPT so far, will be in the future, but this is very important. Then we have the sclerospur to sclerospur distance, which is a proxy for the white to white, which is a proxy for the sulcus to sulcus, which is a proxy for the diameter, for the inner diameter of the ciliary body, and all the rest coming. And it's interesting to report that also the ICL model has a small but significant role. The ICL model is toric or non-toric. So the toricity of the lens probably creates a different stiffness since our population is mainly with, with the root astigmatism. So the deformability of the ICL itself probably also plays a little role. So if we got a precision of 88%, what about the remaining 12%? we ask the machine learning to create two classifiers. What is the classifier? It's something creating different classes. In other words, instead of having an output which is dense, we have a discrete number of outputs. And the discrete number is the size for the ICL. So we have only four sizes and this is a pretty much discrete number that can be forecasted by the algorithm. And with this model, we could raise the accuracy up to 97%. So in conclusion, 
we have the most convenient and the fastest car available out there for the sizing, which is the MS-39. As an alternative, we also have the UBM, but it's time-consuming and you need a team to run it. So, thank you and let's hope to have both the formulas in the next MS-39. Thank you.